What's a sign that somebody wasn't raised right? They don't take responsibility for their actions. Or worse, they want you to take responsibility for their actions. You give them a lift, and they leave rubbish in your car. I forgot my candies and trash in a carpool six years ago, and I still remember it. The driver rushed us out because he made a mistake to be fair, but my fucking brain won't forget it. How they treat people from whom they have nothing to gain. Retail will tell you about 75% of people exhibit this sign. The word, no, just means throw a fit and be as obnoxious as you can be until you get your way. No, does not mean that rules are rules or someone's job might be on the line. They're the important one, not anyone else. The kid that sticks out in my mind was screaming, I want something, in a store, back when we all, you know, went to stores. Not like I want, this particular thing. Just something. Buy me something. I must feed my insatiable thirst for stuff. If they're young kids it's not always a sign that they aren't being raised right. Sometimes kids can just be brats. Now if that behavior carries on into to their teens and adulthood they probably weren't raised rigged. If they make messes in public areas and just wander off, leaving trash in the theater, not flushing, leaving the cart in a parking space. The concept of not flushing in a public place is crazy to me. Like, what happened in that person's life for them to feel that's appropriate? Disrespecting people for doing their job. I worked at an office supply company while I was in college, let's call it paper clips. I had a full-time position, inventory specialist, on top of going to school full-time, and I was going through a bit of a rough patch. During back to school in late September this little girl comes in escorted by what I can only describe as an alpha Karen. The kids started pouting and saying she didn't want to go back to school. I was busy running my cycle count report when AK pointed at me and said something along the lines of, If you don't go to school you'll end up working at paper clips like this guy. Oh, that made me mad. I don't remember exactly what I said in response, but it went essentially like, Ma'am, I graduate in three months from university less than one mile from paper clips and have a job lined up at local hospital. I hope she works here or at MacDoodles so maybe she'll learn the respect you didn't teach her. Not nearly as elegant or eloquent at the time, but you get it. Lack of personal accountability. They can never admit wrongdoing on their part. It's always someone else's fault. Not respecting personal boundaries. If you're wondering why someone has these sorts of issues, take a look at their parents. Dear God, I used to be friends with a guy who was like this. I made the mistake of talking him through some difficult things, and he took that to mean that I wanted him present 24-7. He'd see that I was hanging out with somebody else, and then text me bugging me to ditch that person and hang with him instead because he was sad and lonely. I understand not wanting to be sad and lonely, but you can't make me ditch all my other friendships to fix that. One rule for me, one rule for you. Parents that mess up on the discipline accountability stage of parenting produce these people. Who are the guys who spit out their chewing gum into urinals? I see this all the time at work and I work in a high-end corporate place. Do they think it dissolves and goes down the pipe? The janitor has to pick that out. I had a guy shit on the floor in the bathroom at my work then apologize because I was working the shift not my coworker he hated. People are fucking weird dude. I worked at a truck stop with three bathrooms, a men's, a women's, and a unisex single one in the trucker lounge. The stall in the men's was out of service because people don't understand what a reasonable amount of toilet paper is. Guy comes in, truck bathroom is occupied. Goes to men's stall out of service. Do you? A. Wait for the trucker room. B. Just go to the women's, which is also just a single room and isn't used much. C. Shit in the urinal. Then come out and complain that I should lose my job because the stall is out of order. How they act as a boss when their employee messes up. Yelling and belittling shouldn't be your first option. This was what made me respect the absolute hell out of my manager. I made a mistake on a job a while back, like a big fuck up that cost us a large sum of money. I was fully expecting to get chewed out, and a, you fuck up again, you're out the door, because that's how previous managers had treated us. It's no wonder we had a horrific management and employee turnover rate for years. But no, he came over to the car I was working on, looked at what happened, figured out how the mistake was made, and we talked about it for a couple minutes. 
I was pretty upset about it because I'm usually not the type of tech who is negligent and makes mistakes, so when I do, it profoundly bothers me. He saw that. He listened to what I said, and he went through the process of getting replacement parts ordered for what I messed up. The next morning he came to me again and said, You know, I was thinking about you last night after I got home and thinking of what you could do to prevent this mistake from happening again in the future. Gave me a few suggestions for the future, and closed the conversation with a pat on the shoulder and a, We won't need to have this conversation again, brother. I trust you. It was the most meaningful conversation I have ever had with a manager. I got the sense that he really wants to see his employees succeed and grow. It gave me confidence in a moment in which I had none left. This is how you be a leader, not a boss. A leader lends a helping hand and treats you like an equal. A boss treats you like a replaceable piece of meat. Best boss I ever had, and like a second father to me, gave me the golden rule that I use as a boss now. Praise in public, correct criticize in private. They always portray themselves as a victim. Nothing is ever their fault, and somebody is always out to get them. How they treat animals and people without power. I remember hearing as a kid about a Native American belief that's really stuck with me. After you die and as you're entering the afterlife you must cross a bridge. This bridge is filled with every animal you had a personal encounter with in your lifetime, and together as a whole they decide your fate. Whether or not you can cross the bridge to heaven. This was the first and only time I've heard of your fate being decided by animals. They litter. If you throw your shit on the floor then one, you have no respect, and two, you're a tramp. I'd say on the other end of the spectrum, if someone is anxious about simple social interactions, like sharing their opinions. This is a big indicator that somebody's parents' temper had a hair trigger. Yup, I had severe social anxiety for a while had no confidence to do anything on my own, and was very reclusive and never asked my parents for everything because my dad would explode at anything and everything and rarely say yes to anything. I tried getting around it by asking my mother because she was kind but she had a habit of saying, ask your father, which instantly made me give up. I had no motivation and no confidence. Luckily things have changed for the better but it has taken a hell of a lot of work that wouldn't have been needed had my father just been kind when I was younger. I know a few of these types of people, and they tend to have one or more of the following traits. 1. They are disrespectful to everyone, not just authority figures. Watch how they treat customer service or retail staff. 2. They have no manners in general, or only use manners when they absolutely have to in order to preserve their own interests. 3. They are cruel to people and or animals, and laugh at the suffering of others. 4. They are selfish. 5. They destroy things, steal, and cheat. Some also commit more serious crime. 6. They expect handouts from everyone. 7. They shirk hard work and responsibility whenever they can. 8. They complain a lot and constantly act like they are a victim. 9. They are terrible parents to their own children. Someone that does things to intentionally hurt another person's feelings after they've expressed that, that certain thing hurts their feelings. Person 1. I get angry if someone touches my hair. Person 2. Touches it. Ha! Are you angry? They never say please or thank you. My parents were super sticklers for rules and manners growing up, but they never say please or thank you in restaurants. It is so embarrassing eating out with them. They whistle, snap their fingers, or make that PSPSPS sound to get their server's attention in a restaurant. I snapped my fingers to get a teacher's attention once in middle school. She barked at me something fierce. I learned my lesson. Not putting the card back at the grocery store. Turning conversation back to themselves at all costs. Being a good listener is a sign of a person raised well. They apologize for every little thing. Probably a sign that they grew up with abusive parents that got mad over anything and everything. We know someone that won't get a checking account direct deposit because the banks just steal your money and he takes his paycheck to a check cashing payday loan shop instead. We also know his mom, who is in her mid-forties and on her third bankruptcy. Financial management in general. They don't know how to do normal household stuff. I've seen people that don't even know how to make their own coffee or clean a toilet. God, that's me. My mom won't let me touch anything because 
I don't know how to do it. Well, no shit. You never taught me and you don't believe I googled it. Can't wait to move out and feel like a functioning human. What is a sign that someone was not properly educated? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.